When can a crafter or hobbyist call themselves an artist? What's the tipping point? I'm Sandy Alnock, and I looked online for the answer to this question because there are so many crafters who find it really hard to say they are an artist. I was kind of horrified by some of the things I saw online. So today you're going to get the straight skinny from my heart to yours about when you can start calling yourself an artist. Let's get started. I've talked with a lot of people about this kind of a topic over the years. Way back in my college days, when I first encountered the schisms in art, graphic design was in competition with fine art, and it was a huge topic among my classmates. When I decided to take up graphic design as my major, basically so I could find a job and eat and put a roof over my head, my friends who were painters and printmakers accused me of walking away from art and selling out. They called it commercial art. They didn't win me back. However, it taught me what it meant to be on the other side of the wall from that thing called, quote, fine, end quote, art. I mean, if only painting and printmaking were fine, did that make my chosen area of specialty unfine? It's made me sensitive to these divides between art and craft. But the weird thing is that craft seems to have rolled over in this debate and allowed creativity to be segmented in extremely unhelpful ways. So I want to deal with this head on today. I may step on some toes, so you might want to be sure you're wearing some solid shoes, okay? I personally have three criteria for what qualifies a person to call themselves an artist and also three that are not necessary to be called an artist. First, an artist must make things. I know that seems pretty straightforward and pretty simple, but you need to be a maker of things. Not one who just thinks about it and never does anything or watches a lot of YouTube videos and doesn't create. That would be a dreamer or an admirer, and that's great. If you're one of those, I love having you around here. But an artist puts colors, lines, words, pictures, film clips, thread and fabric, clay, recipe ingredients, whatever it is they work with, they put their materials into a new form they did not have before. Second criterion, an artist must also want to make things. If there's a kid who's taking a mandatory art class in school and they reluctantly glued some macaroni onto cardboard as they were instructed, they are most likely not an artist. The desire to create, having some level of passion, it doesn't have to be all-consuming passion, but some kind of interest in creating is necessary. This looks different for each person. Some people have something they want to say with their content, something with a deep meaning, other people want to express the beauty of something. Other people might have an emotion they want to create in whatever they, they show to the world. And so the person who sees, reads it, or otherwise experiences their creation would feel something. The third requirement to be an artist is that one must be brave. Brave enough to take that thing that's inside of you, whatever skill level that you have to express it with, and put it out into the world. It takes courage. Once we're adults, when we gather up something that we've treasured inside our hearts and we give it form and we put it on paper or in whatever form it's going to be in, that form can be seen by others and it can feel really scary to expose ourselves as somebody who has something to offer, we think we have something to share, and it's normal to worry about how that will be received. So being an artist requires some level of bravery. Being an artist is being a maker, being a willing maker, and being a willing maker who is brave enough to create. Now, before we get to what is not required to be an artist, let's Hear a quick message from our sponsor, which happens to be my brand new stamping class, okay? 
The pattern stamping class at art-classes.com is a unique class taking art impressions, watercolor stamps, and turning them into something that you've probably not seen before, patterned papers. You can make your own nine by 12 or even go larger if you wish patterns using grids that I will share with you and templates that you can follow along and create your very own patterns once you follow the ones in class. You'll learn how to adapt them, how to change things, move things around, change the stamps, change the colors to create whatever you'd like. We're going to learn how to take some of these stamps and turn them into specific flowers, like a carnation, a rose, and here some fireweed. Lots of different stamps can do these sorts of things and get more life out of them than just the original intent that they were made for. And that's really what I wanted to do in this course, to open your mind to see them differently. Some students may choose to just use flat stamping inks and not do any of the watercoloring portion, and that is perfectly fine. Absolutely, whatever you'd like to do. You can also, instead of making the entire page, learn how to make some of these elements and put those elements simply on a card. Make a vignette of a bouquet of flowers or a strip of leaves or something that you've learned from class that you can take and use just a small portion of and get lots and lots of use out of all the techniques you're going to receive in this course. The free pre-class lesson will tell you all of the distress inks and the stamps that you'll need for this class. You may have a lot of materials already and not have to do much shopping, which makes it a very cost-effective class to take. And I'm super excited to see what everybody's going to create in this class. It is so much fun. I'm kind of obsessed. So I hope you'll join me in pattern stamping with Art Impressions Watercolor. Let's talk about what is not required in order to call yourself an artist. My first thing would be proficiency. Just because you aren't at an experienced level that you want to be at or that someone else is at doesn't mean you're not an artist. You're on a long spectrum. It goes from very, very beginners to very, very advanced and beyond. You're simply at a different space on that spectrum, it doesn't mean you're not an artist because everyone on that spectrum is one. And I suggest anytime you reference a skill that you momentarily lack, like I can't draw, always add the word yet. I can't draw yet. Because yet leaves room to grow and deposits hope in your heart that that can change. Number two, you don't need to make income from your art to be an artist. Heck, you don't even need anybody to see it. Many famous artists spent most of their lives selling few or none of their works, and some of the pieces created in their anonymous years are worth a bundle now. But they didn't get anything from it. Does that mean it was bad art? No. You can be someone who works in a paying career by day and is an artist at night, all in the very best tradition of artists as we have done for centuries. And number three... The third thing you don't need to call yourself an artist is a studio. I know plenty of people who create on a corner of their dining room table or a card table in the shed. Yes, a studio is a great convenience, but it's not a necessity. Whatever space you work in, I recommend calling it a studio because that's going to help you learn to call yourself an artist. I mentioned earlier that craft has rolled over in the debate over whether or not it's art. While history relegated craft to stepsister level, today manufacturers, retailers, and influencers in craft are much to blame for keeping craft in that status. Retailers will sell the supplies for artists on the same shelf as children's beading kits and sticker sets and foamies. While we might have picked out a decent set of colored pencils, it feels cheap because it's sitting next to the macaroni art supplies and that cheap feeling follows those supplies home with us. And we start to think, we're using cheap supplies, our art must be cheap too. And it reinforces that perspective on our work. And then we have influencers who will tell us things like, well, I can't draw a stick figure, so I just stamp. Which makes stamping sound like it's a second-class citizen. And it's not. It's just a tool. Or they'll say, I'm no artist like, insert name, so I'm just going to do this little thing. 
They make their creation sound like that little stepchild apologizing for it. Stop repeating those words to yourself. What you say inside your head tells your heart what's true. And then when you want to make art, your heart says, oh, wait a minute. We have heard what you've been saying up there. You told us that we can't draw, we can't make art, we can't watercolor. So let's just shut this thing down before we even start. And then you wonder why you get panicky when you sit down to create. You have trained your heart to be afraid of it. So stop attaching those dismissive and insulting words to what you're creating. Stop saying you're not an artist. Your heart will believe it. So don't even whisper it under your breath. Every step you take is something to learn from, and you're going to just keep growing as an artist on that spectrum. It's possible I'm all alone out here with my perspective on what art truly is. But honestly, the pattern background I made during this video and the cards that came from it are art to me. If this is your kind of art, then check out the link to class in the doobly-doo, the description area under the video. And you too can make art like this. Now I create all kinds of things from small and mailable items to large frameable pieces. And while everybody, every artist has their own very favorite methods, mediums, and objects that they create, it's all art. It's simply on that spectrum. And I want more people to see that spectrum and recognize themselves as part of it. Be sure you're subscribed to the channel, tap the bell, and ask YouTube to send you notifications for all. And then leave me a comment about what you think makes someone qualified to be called an artist. And I don't promise not to argue with you. Thank you so much for tapping the like button as well. And I will see you again in my next video. So in the meantime, get out there and create every day because you're an artist and that's what you were made for.